right, recap of what we've done so far. Up here, we're just filling out the unit so that we can pick stuff out. So we know that time is seconds, and they're going to be the same number. So as long as you're given something in seconds, you mark down the same time for both. If you are given meters, that means it can either be X or it could be Y. If it's an X number, it should indicate that it says range, it should say it's this far away, or it should say horizontal displacement. Then you take that number, you make it positive, you stick it in this table. If it says meters and you're given height, altitude, says how tall something is, it's below or above this, or vertical displacement, all those things would indicate it's Y, and it will be a negative number. Okay. If you're given meters per second, it's definitely going to be VX. VIY is always zero. We never care about V final, and G is always negative 10. And the reason for this is because it's like a drop problem in the Y direction and a constant velocity in the X. Now to help us solve it, once we've filled in what we're given, so this is really used for part one, which is uh, identify variables. So this is given our knowns, what we are given in the problem. Step two is to solve for what remains. To solve for what remains, these are the equations we have, x over t, vx, x over vx, and these here. Cool. All right, here's the new part. So here, I'm going to draw a plane to the best of my ability. we got a Okay, it's not a great plane. Okay, if we drop a package from a plane, does it go straight down? No. No, gravity pulls it down, but yeah, it's going to go, it's going to follow kind of like an arc. If we drop it from here, it's going to go this way and follow half a parabola because it's got some velocity. If the plane doesn't have a velocity, if it's going zero meters per second, that would mean it's falling straight down, and we don't want our planes to do that. So a plane's going some horizontal velocity this way. And that's the same velocity that the package has because the package is in the plane. Okay, So they're going to drop it. It's going to continue going this way, but it's also going to start to fall, which means it lands somewhere out in front. Okay, So whether this is emergency rash rations, or if we go back to World War II when they were literally dropping bombs on places, they don't drop the bomb when they're directly above it because it's going to go out in front. They had to know a couple things to know when should we let go of it to make sure it hits it. Because if they've got a specific target, they don't want to go, mm, I think this will be pretty close. They want to hit that specific target. They need to know a couple things. So what they needed to know was the altitude, how high, how high in the air the plane was flying, and how fast it was going. If they knew those two things, they could figure out, hey, I need to drop this 100 meters before I get there, 500 meters before or in front of the target so that it would go and hit it. They needed to know those things. So this is how this works, okay? Plane is traveling at 100 meters per second. What variable is that? How do you know? Because it's meters per second and that's the only meters per second we know. So we got 100 here. This is zero meters per second always and we don't care about that. We got 50 meters above the ground. So again, understanding how we use this, this chart up here, we've got meters, so it's got to be X or it's got to be Y, because they're both in meters. We need to know which one. So it says above the ground. Oh, above. That's got to be Y. Above is telling you it's going up and down, so it, we know it has to be Y. Now Y is always negative number. So this has to be negative 50, even though it doesn't tell you that it's negative. Why is it negative? We're not talking about the plane, we're talking about the package, and the package drops below the plane. The package is going downwards, it's just like a drop problem. So that's why that's a negative number, okay? That's everything that we're given in the problem, so now we wanna know, well, what can we solve for? Well, if you're missing two things here, we cannot solve, okay? Because each of these equations has two things. If I wanted time, I'd need x over vx, and I don't have both of them. If I need VX and T, I don't have both of those, which means you got to solve on the bottom table. If you have Y or you have T, you start on the bottom. That's the easiest way to do it. So I want T. T is this equation here, square root of 2 delta Y over G. So T equals the square root of 2 delta Y over G. And we're going to plug in our numbers. 2 times negative 50 over negative 10 and square root. 
And we've probably done this same problem like 100 times before if we just did the drop portion. We found heights of something and figured out how long it takes. That's not new. So 2 times 50 over 10 because I know the negatives are going to cancel. So that's 2 less buttons to press. That gives me 3.16. Well, now what? What's the same? Yeah, it's the same time. So I don't have to do any more math. I just got to copy it down again. Times are always going to be the same because the time it takes to hit here is the time it takes to go over this way. Now we can get x. x is vx times t. So x equals vx times t. 100 times 3.16 is going to be 316 meters. Okay. Our answer is it's got to be dropped 316 meters in front of the target. Do you want it to land here? We got to drop it 316 meters out in front. Okay. Um, make sure that you're answering the question. So we'll get this, but you want to answer the specific question, which means to go, okay, horizontal distance, that's X. Okay. Number two. The Royal Gorge Bridge in Colorado is above the Arkansas River. Suppose you kick a rock horizontally off the bridge, and it takes eight seconds to, for it to splash in the river. The rock hits the water such that the magnitude of its horizontal displacement is 45 meters. Find the speed at which the rock was kicked and how tall was the bridge. There's two parts to this. What are we given? And what is that? Which one? Both. They got to be the same number. So yeah. Yeah, we're getting both. The rock hits the water. Horizontal displacement is 45 meters. So what is that? How do you know? Keywords I gave you. Wow, I'm so nice. Horizontal displacement. So 45, is it positive or negative? Always positive. Cool. That's all we're given in the problem. So if I want Vx or if I want Y, well, I know those things are zero and we don't care about them. So you just pick an equation. It doesn't matter which one you start with. You want to start with Vx. What is Vx equal to? Good. So you just take x divided by t, which is 45 over 8. And we'll call that 5.63. We want y. Y is equal to, or delta Y equals what? One half. Good. So then I plug it down and say, well, that's negative 5 times 8 squared. Because 1 half of negative 10 is negative 5. Negative 5 times 8 squared gives us negative 320 meters. What's the speed at which a rock was kicked? 5.63. If it ever says speed or how fast, that's the only one we're given. And how tall is the bridge? Is it negative or positive? We're talking height of a bridge. Positive. We know that the rock fell down 320 or negative 320 meters, which means the building or the bridge must have been 320 meters tall. So that's the answer to this one. That's the answer to that one. Nice job. Three, an arrow is aimed horizontally directly at the center of a target 20 meters away. So we've got an arrow. There's your arrow. Here's a target directly across. Not a very pretty target. Okay. The arrow hits 0 0.05 meters below the center of the target. Neglecting air resistance, what was the initial speed of the arrow? So if you aim something directly at the center and you shoot it, as soon as it leaves the arrow, gravity is going to start pulling it down, which means it's not going to hit the center unless it's going super, super, super fast or it's really, really, really close. Typically what you have to do if you're shooting an archery is aim above it some amount. Okay. So we need to know what are we given. 20 meters away. What is that? How do you know? Horizontally. It's horizontally. That's this far from the target. And that's really what away is telling us. 
So from here to here, that's X, that is 20 meters. So it's about 60 feet away. And we've got 0 0.05 meters below the center of the target. And that's Y, and is it positive or negative? Always negative, 0 0.05, that is five centimeters. It's not a huge distance, we know those two things. We know VIY is zero and don't care about that. I want you guys to try and solve this one. You're gonna get time first. The times are the same. Then you can get VX. Go ahead and try that. If you get number three, go ahead and try number four. Is anybody absent on Friday? On this one, you should get square root of 2 times negative 0 0.05 divided by negative 10 should give you 0.1 seconds. Times are going to be the same. To get Vx, it is 20 divided by 0.1, which is the same as multiplying by 10, so it should be 200 meters per second, which is, I don't know, a really stupid fast arrow. Um, so that's not really realistic. In real life, if it's 20 meters away, it's going to drop significantly more than that. So you have to aim upwards to compensate. Yeah, I mean, you can stretch all the way out. It's probably not going 200 meters per second. I'll have to look up what a good velocity on an arrow is, but that's really fast. Okay. Number four, we've got a marble is launched from the top of a 0.9 meter tall table, and it lands 0.5 meters away. Find the initial velocity of the marble. Yeah, go ahead and try this one. Five is really like 4b. What you're going to do here is after you get your initial velocity, this number here, this vx, you're actually going to use it down here. Go ahead and try those. All right, try 4, 5, and 6. Wait, on the first VX, you get 28, bro. On VX? Yeah, on number four. Yeah. No. I got one point two. Yes. Wait, did you divide 0.9 by... Did you square root your time? Yeah, I got 0.316. Uh, yeah, that time's wrong. You should get 0.42 for the time. Did you flip the X and Y? Okay, you can check your work up there. I got number four up there, so you can check it. But I'm not quite sure if it's right on. Is there a reason I dropped? On 4? On 4B. So did you get this part right? You got the 1.19? 
or 1.2? I have 1.2. Okay, that's fine. You're going to use that number for your V. Yeah, okay, I got that. VX. So if you got this is 1.19 meters per second, 0. 0.2 oh, away. I got it. I have a point. Yeah. So you should have these two things. Now you can get time. They're the same time. Then you can get Y because this is zero, and we don't care about that. So once you get this number up here, you should be able to go through to get this. If you do it right, what do we get? What? Whatever. I'm not gonna be nitpicky on that. So both are okay. I got 0. 0.141 meters. Oh, shucks. I forgot to be rounded. Uh, what'd you get for your time? Oh, I didn't square it. Where did you get? 0. 0.17 for your time? I got 0. 0.24. Uh, uh, yeah, about 0. 0.17. I got point. I used 1.68 or 0. 0.168. So it was almost close. What would you say, Nicole? We're reusing this number from here. What did you get through Sure. That'll be close enough. I'll, I'll go over them all here in a second, y'all. So uh, up here on this time, y'all, because we have these two numbers, we need to use the top equation for time. So you're going to use x divided by vx when you solve for the one up top. And then it's still the same number. You can't use the 2 delta y over g because we don't have delta y yet. So we start with this. 0.2 divided by 0.19, you get this time, they're the same number, and then you can use your y equation. So I'm just going to go ahead and work the whole thing out, I suppose. Yeah, that's good enough. If you use 1.2, it's going to this will be rounded and the time will be rounded. As long as it's in that same ballpark, especially when stuff gets squared, it's going to throw our numbers off a little bit. Okay. So this was 0.9, this was 0.5. Once we have that plugged in, we do 0.5 divided by 1.19. Should get us 0.42 for both. And then, yeah. Oh, I did it the other way. I'll work backwards. Anyway, here we should get 0.168, 0.168. And down here, those are the final answers, but we started with 8.4 seconds for both. We got 15 meters away. So here to get this number, I took 15 divided by 8.4. And to get Y, I did 5 times 8.4 squared. Um, that should be a negative. When it wants to know how tall is the cliff, the cliff is 352.8 meters tall, not negative. And the initial velocity was 1.79 meters per second. Okay. Any questions on this stuff? Okay.
me go ahead and stop recording.